Hello and good evening. My name is William Jansen Merle Stephan, and I'll be your preacher for this evening. Our scripture today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, and it will be read from Eugene Peterson's The Message Paraphrase of the Bible. By entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us, set us right with him, make us fit for him. We have it all together with God because of our master Jesus. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his door to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know our troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how that patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Now, we've all been through many troubles in our lives, as Paul describes. We are Christians, so we know hardships. But tonight, I'd like to tell you my story. My troubles started right at birth. My mom's normal doctor was on vacation, so the only on-call doctor had to deliver me. But that's only the beginning. I had the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck, and my vital signs dropped with every push. And the monitoring device in my head kept coming out. It cut me up leaving with the scar I still have today on my forehead. Even after that, I spent several days in the intensive care unit, but I made it through. One of many problems overcome, but many more to go. Only a few years later, I had to go through something that no kid should ever have to go through. I watched as my biological parents were divorced. I didn't know what was going on, as I was only three but it caused me much sadness and led to a lot more trouble in the future. Still, I was able to hold on a, to a tight bond with both of my parents. After a year, my mom decided to try again in a relationship, and this is where I met my stepfather. For the first couple years, I was too innocent and naive to notice anything, but there was definitely a problem. My stepfather and my mother were fighting, shouting in their room. I had no idea what was going on. I only knew fear and panic in those times. When my stepfather started to take his anger out on me, I woke up. I found out he was a very manipulative and mentally abusive person. He was a professional actor and knew how to play the game. One moment, he'd be just fine. The next, you'd do one little thing and he'd be shouting at you for something completely unrelated to what you did. There were times where I would cry because of how scared I was of my so-called stepfather but he thought it was just because I wanted to go back to playing my games. It was the darkest point thus far in my life. But then he went to go live in California for a year. It was bliss, and it helped me realize just how much better off we were without him. When he came back to Fargo, my hatred was stronger than ever. It came to a climax when my mother divorced him. But even then, he was still able to leech off of us. He got money and other reparations that had to be paid by my mother. I haven't spoken to him since. You might think that my troubles would be over, but no. My mom got diagnosed with breast cancer less than a year later, and it was easily the most terrifying moment of my life. It caused a pure inner terror that I had never felt before. But I had to stay strong for my mom's sake and supported her as much as I could. Could this finally be the end of my troubles? <laughs> no. On March 13th, 2020, this was Friday, mind you, Friday the 13th, COVID-19 restrictions in Fargo knocked out school and everything else for two weeks. It seemed like it'd be a nice little vacation, but our two-week quarantine turned into a one-and-a-half nightmare of COVID regulations and safety. Of course, that would be the, the epitome of my troubles, but again, wrong. Right at the beginning of February 2021, my good friend and fellow Boy Scout Liam 
committed suicide. I was devastated. It felt like the lowest point in my life, and it was probably the first time that I ever felt truly depressed because I knew that there was no fixing this. In every other situation that I had been in before, the problem could be solved through some method, but there is no solution to death. I only wish I knew what happened, but I will never know. But I know we'll meet again someday. Luckily, ever since then, things have gotten better. Life is full of ups and downs, but that was definitely the bottom. But with the summer and with COVID finally letting off, I'm finally getting back up the mountain. How do all my troubles relate to our scripture, though? Well, the troubles really in this that Paul talked about in the scripture, they are the same troubles that created the patience in Christians alike and in me, and then forged that steel of virtue that was talked about and created my faith. My first experience when I remember being really close to God was as a kid, only five years old, I had a little Bible that I got when I was about three, and I would read it all night long, cover to cover from whenever I went to bed at six or seven till midnight to the light of my fish tank. And I would do this frequently because I had nightmares as a kid and it was a way for me to go to bed knowing that I would be okay. I always went to church with my dad and my mom, but I was really too young to know what was going on. But then I started playing percussion at the church that my mom and I go to. And I felt much more connected to God. I didn't really know anything new but the, the feeling of being there and playing music and praising the Lord with people who did the same was something that awakened something inside of me. At that point, things were going quite well, and I was planned on being confirmed at that church. But because of a miscommunication and some serious disrespect on that pastor's part, I left that church and joined in here at Flame of Faith. I've played here for quite a while, too, and this has very much deepened my faith. Confirmation here was a way for me to set that faith in stone and what I had been feeling being built for years. After all these troubles, I was still able to connect to God and see that I was loved by so many. I really do think that without faith, I would have not gotten to where I am now. I have worked through many hardships to strengthen my faith. And because of all the rough times, my faith is very strong. My faith was built on my passion for music and reading and was tempered by my traumatic experiences. For some people, faith is the action of going to church every Sunday or praying at every meal. For some people, this is exactly what their faith is. However, faith is a very fickle thing. All Christian faith starts from the same seed of Jesus, but it grows into a completely different plant for each person. For some, Faith comes easily as a flower budding in spring. For others, like me, their faith grows through hardships, like a tree fighting drought and bugs that try and bring it down. Faith built through the troubles described in Romans chapter 5 is strong because of the patience that comes with it. We know God will do divine work in divine time, so we must wait with a virtue tempered like steel and a patience strong as a tree's roots. Please pray with me. We thank you, God, that you have given us enduring hope, one which cannot disappoint us or mislead us. We thank you that through our faith in you and in your Son, Jesus Christ, you enter into every believing heart and make new lives that have been torn asunder by the darkness of this world. We pray today that those believers who are asleep may awake and know that salvation is nearer now than when they first believed. Help them and us to lay aside the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light that you bestow upon those who actively seek you day by day. Grant that their faith and ours may be fully alive. We ask today for those who have lost hope and for those who have never had it. Grant to us and to those we lift before you in our hearts a new and abiding vision of what you have done and what you are doing and what you will do to save and redeem your people and indeed the creation itself. Grant that all might seem and believe and discover their purpose and the purpose of all that is and all that is yet to be. 
We ask all of this, you knowing that you are our hope and our salvation, a very present help in times of trouble, and the one whose purpose is to grant a new and abundant life to us and our world. Praise be to your name. Amen. <laughs>